can use this system, and we start with this thing here, the S. So it's a grammatical sentence. If it starts with an S at the bottom, it ends up at the top, all the words of your language. Now, let's not do a whole sentence initially. Let's do a determinative phrase. So I'm going to bring up a bit of paper, move this up so I've got room. I'm going to do a determinative phrase. Um, we'll work through this and we'll start seeing it makes sense and we'll do more and more complicated examples. Okay, um, here's a pen. Right, so a determinant phrase can be made out of a determiner, like duck and a noun phrase. A noun phrase can be made out of um, an adjective and a noun phrase. And you can keep on going there forever. The big, black, bare, scratchy, sleeping, uh, sleepy cat. You keep on adding more and more adjectives by just breaking that down. So that noun phrase can also just be a noun. Mm -hmm. And now we use this useful rule here. Let's class a word. It says, so here's our list of determiners. A, uh, the, and all are some of our determiners. Cat, mat, and hat are some of our nouns. So whenever we have a noun, we can say instead of noun, we have cat. Adjective might be black. Determiner might be the. The black cat is a determiner phrase. And it's got all sorts of logical properties and so on. If some of you are keen, then in postgrad you can do an entire course with me reading the first two chapters on a book about determiner phrases. I've got half of your chapter three in the book. Um, but anyway. Yeah. It's how thus and ah and those sorts of words work. But the idea is you can take the sentence thus, black, cat, and break it down and show it's a determiner phrase. So I started from the bottom up, that's unnatural. What you would actually do is start from the black cat, say the is a determiner, black is an adjective, cat is a noun, using the rules that I did. Determiner can't join with adjective. Determiner can join with a noun phrase. Adjective can't join with a, a noun. A noun. Turn the noun into a noun phrase. The adjective and noun phrase join together to make a single noun phrase. The determiner and noun phrase can join together to give a determiner phrase. So that's how you would actually do it. You take your words and you break them down and see what grammatical structure, what form it is. And kind of the aim is to get a sentence. A sentence is, as you know, at least these sorts of sentences, something that's true or false. It's a statement, a proposition, a thing you can do logic with. I don't have any grammar, grammar here for doing sentence, uh, commands or questions or greetings. So these are all sort of statementy things. So the idea is, if I give you a, a sentence, is it grammatically correct? This was kind of discovered-ish in the 1970s by a guy called Montague, and suddenly logicians and linguists started talking to each other. Because linguists have been doing something a bit like this, informally, for ages, and the logicians had these Genson sequence, and suddenly they thought, given 20 rules, we can describe English. And then we just tweak these three rules and we describe French. Very quickly they worked out, I only worked with a small group of Western European, Indo-European uh, Indo languages. You put it near Chinese and bang. <coughs> How many thousand characters are there? Hundred thousand? Several, anyway. Um, so this only works for certain sorts of languages. Um, but they thought we've kind of worked out the, the structure behind lots of the important languages, which is to say the languages in the towns where they live. Um, Western Europe, isn't it wonderful? And in the next 10 years, like Jeremy's supervisor, Jeremy Sullivan, his supervisor was one of the four or five big names in it. Jeremy study linguistics, apparently initially before logic in cognitive linguistics. And after about 10 years, everyone realized this is hopeless and horrible. We've worked out English, we've got maybe two, 3,000 rules, there's lots of exceptions, so we'll stop. But they thought they could do this in 20 rules, then 25, then 30, then 35, then 1,000, and then you see getting bigger. But you can approximate roughly what we do in about 20 rules. The whole of most Western European languages, I think, lots of the Indian languages too. 
So we're going to play that game because it's also used in natural language applications for reading things and working out whether things are grammatical or not. So that's kind of the game. It also is the same sort of manipulation here. Okay. Do people sort of see what the game is and why we're playing it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've done the black cat. How about the cat sat? Have a go at the cat sat. Getting onto the big hard things now. Um, this, yeah, sat is a verb. Sat is a verb one. We've already got the and cat listed there. And I'll just write up here so you can see it. Um, sat, set, and ran are verbs. Right, see if you can have a go at getting the cat sat. Can that sound like a sentence to me? It'll be true or false? See if we can get you get a sentence out of it or not. Doing the same process that I did before, breaking it down to their types. method for early childhood teaching and grammar at one stage. So we're that confident that we're going to sort it all out. And it almost works. The kids don't get it, but the primary school teachers get really excited to understand grammar better. And it seems really simple to them. It turns out the kids use different rules than the adults. And every couple of years you change what your grammatical rules are until you get to about eight. So it really didn't work. But they thought they could do this to teach primary school kids proper grammar. Actually, about the time that I went to primary school, though they didn't do that for me. So, could you imagine teaching this stuff to primary school kids, primary school teachers, and then teaching them teaching it to seven-year-olds? Because I really did for a couple of years. Not quite in the school system, but it was the idea. Okay, who's got the cat sack? And does anyone know whether it's a sentence or not? You got a sentence? A sentence? Can, Did anyone get us to there was a different sort of phrase? Can we possibly split them all in two? The cat and sat. So that's almost certainly the first move you have to do. Yep. Yeah. Okay, right. so I'm going to have a go at, at doing this. Um, I ran out of room. I'll write it this way then. That'll work. The cat sat. Now that is a determiner, cat is a noun, sat is a verb one. The one says there's only one object it's talking about, mm -hmm. as opposed to the cat kills the mouse, it's talking about two objects. Okay, verb one becomes a verb phrase. Sometimes there's other things you can do with that verb. The noun becomes a noun phrase. The determiner and the noun phrase become a determiner phrase. The determiner phrase and the noun phrase become a sentence. People get, yep, got some nods. So now we know that it's true or false that the cat's um, sat. Now we don't know which one it is, we don't know what the cat is or what it does, but it's a sort of sentence. It's a sentence and it's a sort of thing that's true or false. Okay. Now let's look at something else. The cat black. Do you know, let's rhyme. The cat fat. The cat fat. Is it a sentence? Is it a verb phrase? What is it doing? Is it true or false? I guess I should show you the list of things. So fat, I'm going to the adjective category. Cat is still a noun. Can I 
just say that we can't do it? You can just say you can't do it. Can you explain why it can't be done? It's just ungrammatical. So it's ungrammatical in English or in the system? In English, yeah. Oh, so this is just a made up system that I, I took 10 minutes to do. Oh. So I agree, ungrammatical in the English, in, in the English, in my English. Yeah. There are some variants of English where it might be grammatical. I don't know. There's variations in there. And I'm, this system I know doesn't completely work because I know that you have thousands of rules to be accurate. Um, so you're right, it's wrong in English. Does this system capture that wrongness with what we're doing? Because it turns out that these systems can be remarkably accurate for most mainstream simple cases. You know, they took me about 10 minutes to do it, most of that was formatting. Yeah. Does the order matter? Does the order matter in English? No. Oh, sorry, in, in English. Your oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, so, yes. Unlike logic, it is debt in NP. That's an important thing. That's why I had this example. So, you can't flip them. So, you can't flip them. I did not say that. So, yes, it's the cat. It's not the same as cat bar. So, this is an audit dependent language. Some languages aren't audit dependent. This one is audit dependent. I did not say that. So, the cat fact can't be done. What about the date? Why can't it be done? I agree. Why can't it be done? Because you can't have a noun and then an adjective. Right. Any of your rules. So this goes debt, noun, adjective. And there's nothing you, oops, there's nothing you can do with this adjective, because an adjective needs to have a noun phrase after it, right? So you're just stuck. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say we hopped around and we had the fat cat. Is that a sentence? It's a phrase. It's a phrase. What sort of phrase is it? Noun phrase. Is it? It's a noun phrase. Is it? It's, so it's, the fat the fat cat is a noun phrase. In English, it's often called a noun phrase. Yeah. In this system, it's a determinative Det phrase. And if you had Helen Charters as your linguist, then she would insist on calling it a determinative phrase. Okay. But if you had Keith, he prefers to call it a noun phrase. It's actually up in the air which way it is. People disagree on it. Does the the override the noun? Does the noun override the the? There's different reasons for each, depending on. Helen does a lot more Chinese languages, and she reckons that calling this determinative phrase works better than Eastern Asian languages. I have no idea. So this is the stuff I talk about to decide. So yeah. Okay, so it's this thing, the fat cat is a determinative phrase. It's like the start of a sentence. You say the fat cat, and you can put a noun, a uh, verb uh, uh, at the front of it, the end of it. Okay, sometimes things get a bit more complicated. I'm going to jump to the very end of the second page, you can get an idea of where we're going. This is a sleazy, nasty, sexist rape song, which was really popular in the 40s. Um, the idea is that this older man gets this young woman drunk, tells her it's not alcoholic, she wakes up the next morning in bed with him. It's, um, it's a rape song, but it has some great bits of grammar in it, which isn't the only reason that they thought it was funny at the time. Okay. Yes. That's the sleaziest, nastiest video I can find of it. It just makes my skin crawl. <laughs> okay. You put out the cat, the wine, the cigar, and the lamps. Now, there's something weird with that in English. What's weird with that English stuff? 